ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम्स यू गॉड इज वेरी डियर टू ऑल हिज डिवोटिस द प्रेजेंट श्री सच साई अवतार इज वेरी इन डियरिंग टू ऑल दो हु वर्शिप इज नेम एंड फॉर्म but at the same time he is dear to all others too how come the answer is provided by swami himself swami says my life is my message every word and deed of his inspires his devotees every action of bhagwan baba reflects the work he has undertaken for the temporal and spiritual welfare of all mankind as a child he told mother isorama i have come here to serve and every word of this statement has been translated into action by this incarnation of god who has come down to earth only to grant deliverance to the entire world bhagwan baba has promised mother isorama that he would provide education medical aid and drinking water to the people of puttaparthi and the surrounding villages as a fulfillment of that promise huge institutions imparting quality education super specialty hospitals and mammoth drinking water projects all free of cost have been gifted by swami to lakhs of people along with his devotees others too are reaping the benefits of all these projects this shows that swami is lokanatha and today his mission is spreading far and wide and is touching the life of each and every person Well, here is an incident which narrates how Swami is endearing to all. A few years ago, a Sai devotee was traveling by train to Puttaparthi. In the train, he started talking to his co-passengers. He realized that the person sitting next to him was also going to Puttaparthi. The devotee started talking to him. about swami with a lot of enthusiasm but there was a cold response from the co traveler he told the devotee i am not a baba devotee like you i am going there for treatment of my heart problem that's all the devotee gave him all the information about the hospital and the facilities available there they reached puttaparthi the person went to the hospital and the devotee came to prashanthalayam after one year the devotee went back to prashanthalayam for guru purnima he had darshan and heard swami's guru purnima discourse as he was walking out of sai kurunth hall somebody patted him on his back he turned around and saw an unknown person smiling at him as the devotee was wondering who this person was the person said don't you recognize me last year we had traveled together in the railway compartment oh the devotee remembered the incident and asked how is your health now the gentleman answered by swami's grace i am fine i got a new lease of life since today is guru purnima i have come here with my family for darshan of the jagat guru in order to seek his blessings just a year ago this person was aloof and disinterested how did he start talking about swami with so much of love and respect how did this come about it seems this person had been advised heart surgery by the city doctors yes 
after he got himself admitted to super specialty hospital in prashantalayam all the tests were conducted with the help of the latest state of the art medical equipment the doctors here told him that he did not need a surgery instead he was advised medication a strict diet and daily practice of yoga he had been following this routine regularly for one year whole year and was now in perfect health while he was at the super special hospital hospital he heard about swami's life his mission and his glory throughout the year he along with his family read sai literature yes and all of them became very eager to take swami's darshan so now became a pakka devotee and therefore he appeared here on the occasion of guru purnima to seek darshan of sai who is endearing to all this is rather a common experience to many of the devotees all devotees love god and are devoted to him but who is a true devotee the one whose devotion is accepted by god is a devotee bhagwan sri krishna says yo me bhakta sa me priya yo me bhakta sa me priya my devotee is very dear to me so just as god is dear to his devotees devotees are very dear to god since his birth bhagwan baba has been loved by one and all the moment he was born on this earth isharma subama and lakshmama were the first ones to have his darshan and this divine babe was very endearing to them as a small child he was a favorite of all his of uh, particularly of his older sister and she used to fulfill all his demands as he grew a bit older little satya became dear to the all needy who came to his door to ask for food and clothes satya narayana who with his playmates started the pandari bhajana group in puttaparthi was popular not only among his friends but also among the villages of puttaparthi and the surrounding villages it was as if he had a magnetic pull but after bhagwan's advent on earth the one whom we may truly call a devotee was swami's grandfather sri kondamarazu he was swami's first devotee because he realized swami's divinity right from his birth he knew that this was satya bhama's sri krishna a fact eluded to by devi satya bhama to him in a dream due to manifest divine qualities of bala satya he used to call him chinna guru young guru later satya playmates also made him their guru and the villagers used to address him as brahma gnani swami's glory began to spread in the nearby villages even prior to to the declaration of his avatar hood after the proclamation the fragrance of his glory started spreading far and wide people from far away places started coming to puttaparthi for fulfillment of their desires and became devotees of their dear bhagwan swami who is dear to all devotees fulfills all their desires the incident given here illustrates this swami was very dear to subama he had promised her that he would pour water in her mouth in her last moments but when she laid her mortal coil he was not in puttaparthi her dead body was kept for two days but the effulgence on her face had not 
faded. Finally, Swami reached here after two days and called out to her in a soft, sweet tone, Subama, I have come. And slowly Subama opened her eyes. Swami held her hand in his, gave her vibhuti and poured some water in her mouth. After partaking it, she passed away peacefully. The centenarian, Sri Kondamarazu, had such one desire. He wished that his dear Bhagavan should be by his side in his last moments. When he realized that the end was drawing near, he told Iswaramma, my end is drawing near. When Iswaramma was about to give him the Tulasi water, he stopped her and Swami arrived there at that very moment to fulfill his grandfather's last wish. He was about to pour the water in his mouth when Kondamarazu stopped him and said, Swami, please drink some water first and then give the remaining water to me. Swami acceded to the request of this dear devotee and after partaking, the tirtha given by Bhagwan, Sri Kondamarazu breathed his last. Swami, who is very dear to all his devotees, accepts their heartfelt prayers and grants them salvation. On the completion of the sacred Janeshwari, Sant Janeshwar in his Pasayadan, in his Pasayadan Prasad requested the Lord, May the darkness of ignorance disappear. May the world see the light of righteousness. May all the auspicious desires of all living beings be fulfilled. That is the prayer. This prayer of Sant Janeswar was accepted by God and he incarnated on earth in Sai's form to fulfill the auspicious desires of all living beings in the world. Swami says, Yoga means the acquisition of something desirable and Kshema means the preservation of what is thus acquired. The discipline by which you can preserve, this is Ananya Chintana, exclusive meditation on the Lord. That will cleanse the mind and it will make you into a Bhakta. Swami also says, a devotee is one who talks about God, sings about God and only sees God, spends all his time with God. Bhagwan Baba has incarnated on earth to fulfill the auspicious desires of his devotees and to look after their welfare. He is like the Kalpataru, wish-fulfilling tree to his devotees. When little Satcha was in school, he used to put his hand inside the school bag and manifest peppermints, pencils, etc. and give them to his playmates. Later, from the tamarind tree on the hillside, he gave a lot of desired things to his devotees. And this tree came to be known as wish-fulfilling tree. This was just an instrument. The real Kalpataru is Bhagavan Baba, who fulfills all the desires of his devotees. When Ishwarama heard about the stories from the Shirdi incarnation, she realized that other than three to four villages near Shirdi, Sai had not visited any other place. So she asked Baba, Swami, you are incarnate of Shirdi Sai and you did not go anywhere beyond Shirdi. Then why do you go everywhere? The purpose of asking this question was only really because she could not bear separation from Swami for even a few moments. On hearing this, Swami laughed and replied, How can I not go anywhere and stay in Pudabharti alone, wherever my devotees are, 
and by whichever name they may call me, I have to visit those places in order to bless them. I have to do this. This is why I have taken birth. Innumerable devotees of Swami have experienced the truth of this statement of His. Whoever calls out to Him with a pure heart, He rushes there to help and save the devotee. Whether worldly or spiritual, He fulfills all the auspicious desires of all His devotees. As Sant Yaneshwar has said, Swami is verily an all-pervading paradise of fulfillment. Sri Madhavacharya said, Devotion is love for God. Those who accept God to be their true friend and love Him wholeheartedly are devotees. In the sacred book Viveka Chudamani, it is declared devotion is Swasvarupa Darshan to realize one's higher, higher self as God. And God likes to revel and sport in the hearts of such devotees. Lord Sri Krishna is the very best example of the God who reveals and sports in the hearts of the devotees. We all know about his Rasa Krida with Gopikas of Gokul. During Rasa Krida, every Gopika used to feel that Sri Krishna was sporting with her alone in spite of the fact that there were numerous Gopikas and just one Sri Krishna. This Leela would take place and, and the only explanation is that the Lord used to revel and sport as the self in the pure heart of each Gopika. Once long ago, Swami was in the mood to sport with his devotees. There were a few devotees around him. He said to them, Who will adorn me with a tulsi garland today which will reach right up to my feet? All the devotees rushed to the garden nearby and brought tulsi leaves. Each one estimated the length and started stringing the garland. To their surprise, Swami also started stringing one. When all the tulsi garlands were ready, Swami let each devotee garland him turn by turn, but none of these garlands reached him. Reached to his feet, you see. The only garland which reached his feet was the one made by Swami himself. Everyone was overjoyed at this leela. Then Swami collected all the garlands and rolled them into balls. He asked everyone to form a circle and started throwing the ball at each one. Slowly, he increased the speed to such an extent that each one is felt as if Swami was throwing the ball only at him. The bliss that Hurdaya Vihari, Swami gave all of them is quite beyond description. Thank you for your time. We'll meet later.